Welcome to AAA and DBF's joint first GBM. Uh, if you're not here for that, um, <laughs> you have the wrong Zoom link. Um, but if you are here for that, uh, great. All right. Um, we are going to get started. Um, so I'm going to hand it off to Brenda, who is the chairperson of AAA. Great, thank you. Well, let's see if I can see stuff through all these Zoom tabs I have open. So welcome everyone. Thank you for coming to our first GBM of this year. Um, so to start off, um, let's talk a little bit about what AIAA is. So um, AIAA is UCSD's only pre-professional aerospace student organization. Um, we, we emphasize mentorship, learning, interconnectivity, and with the goal of preparing our members for a future in aerospace. So we do a lot of career workshops, networking events. Um, we, have a, we try to have a speaker at all of our GBMs, except for the first one, because it is more of an introductory GBM. So um, while other engineering orgs, some of them build projects, which you will learn a little bit about DBF in a second, AAA focuses on the professional career-oriented side of the industry. So this is a great org if you want to learn about all the different fields that you could um, be a part of within that whole aerospace industry, which we all know is a vast and rapidly growing industry, and make connections that will help you through your bachelor's degree. And you can also network with graduate students. And yeah, it is a great way to meet people, connect, network, and learn about the industry. So with that, um, we have a few board members to introduce to you. These are the people who make all of what we do possible. Um, so we can go ahead and start with myself. So like Ignatia said, uh, my name is Brenda Williamson. I am the chairperson of AIAA this year. Um, so we'll start on the personal side. So I'm a third year aerospace engineering major. Uh, my hobbies and interests include yoga, creative writing, on all the things you see listed there. Um, but on the AAA board as a chairperson, um, my responsibilities as I briefly summarized here is to delegate, which is not entirely true. So we, my, the chairperson is in charge of keeping the direction of the club on track. Um, part of it is delegating, but I also um, am in charge of communicating with the San Diego section of AAA. Um, AIAA is a national organization, which has a national branch, local branches, and then sections at universities. So we talk to them, they give us some great resources. And yeah, that's a very cool position to be in. If you're interested, you can work your way up our board, get involved, and then maybe you could have this position, position too down the road. So my past responsibilities um, I was previously the speaker coordinator, which is kind of a position that I sort of invented myself a couple of years ago as a freshman. Um, a past board member had the idea of a speaker series um, where occasionally, we used to have it four times a quarter, we would have a speaker come in and talk about their work, but that became a little overwhelming. So that's why we fused it with our GBMs. But that position is still, or it's available this quarter. We still haven't filled it yet. And we will talk a little bit about um, the open board positions we still have later on. So another role of the speaker coordinator is this, the distinguished lecture event, which I was in charge of um, this past spring. We had to quickly transition it to an online format at the last second. Um, so that was thrilling, um, but it was a huge success. And again, you can learn a little bit more about that later if you're interested in potentially filling that position. Okay, so that's all about me. I will pass it on to Ignatius. All right, yeah, so like Brenda mentioned, um, there's a lot of things that you can do. Um, you can even make up your own positions if you really wanna get that involved with AIAA. Um, we're always innovating and stuff like that. But anyways, um, I am Ignatius. I am the vice chairperson at AIAA. Um, I'm also a student minister at the Newman Catholic Center. Um, I used to be on Team Spider, uh, FRC. Um, I'm an Eagle Scout. Um, I picked aerospace engineering because it was kind of the first major on the list that like looked interesting and I just got in. Um, but you know, I did, I did like planes and rockets and things like that. So I was like, okay, cool. This is a good major. Um, I really like to travel. I love to fly. Um, I don't understand people who don't like to fly. I'm sorry. 
Um, this uh, picture of me is from uh, Iceland a couple of years ago. Um, I was born in Indonesia. Um, our secretary, Fajar, is currently in Indonesia. Uh, my flightless, favorite flightless bird is the Adeli penguin. Um, what do I do anyways? Uh, so yes, this, this Adeli penguin. Um, so what do I do? Uh, I'm a liaison for a university affiliated group. Um, so that means I work with uh, TASC, I work with uh, the Jacobs School, I work with the Idea Center um, and other organizations. So if you are part of another organization and you wanna partner with us on an event, uh, come talk to me or you know, email me or anything, uh, Slack me, Discord me, I'm everywhere. Um, I'm a jack of all trades kind of work, so I just do everything, if that makes sense. Um, everything that nobody else is doing. And then um, according to the, our, um, what is it? Our constitution? No, our, um, bylaws. our bylaws, our bylaws, yeah. Uh, I'm your personal assistant, um, which is kind of weird to think about, but whatever. I'm not uh, that And then important. I lead when Brenda's, uh, <laughs> I also lead when Brenda's not around or, or just not looking. Um, but there's really no difference for me. Um, yeah, so that's me and I'm gonna hand it off now to Fajar. Yeah, so hi, I'm Fajar. I'm the secretary for yeah, AIWA at UCSD. So what do I do? I take organized and detailed notes during officer meetings. I maintain the newsletter and apparently the social media you know, side of things. Um, I'm, I'm new here. So yeah, that's an important thing to know about me. Um, and on personal side, I'm a computer engineer from Revell College. I'm a third year. I have a website if you guys wanna check it out. I'm interested in things like sci-fi and business. I'm a dual citizen. I was born in the US, but raised in Indonesia, where I am now, as Ignatius has mentioned. And just a sort of a shameless plug if anyone with CS background looking to do a project, you know, hit me up. I'm looking to find people to do that with. But yeah, um, that's it for me. All right. Uh, next, we have Carissa, who is our outreach coordinator. Hi everyone, I'm Carissa. I'm the outreach coordinator. So some of the things I do here is I help plan and organize outreach events. Uh, usually they're either on or off campus, but for now they're going to be online. Um, I also work with other, the other engineering organizations for their events, and I also work with the schools like high school, middle school, elementary school, and we do events there with the kids too to help kind of introduce them to STEM and get them interested. And something, just some stuff about me is I'm a second year aerospace engineering major. I'm in Warren College. And some things I'm interested in are music, especially piano, uh, knitting, crocheting, badminton, reading, trying new foods, and cooking. And that's just some fix of food that I've attempted to make during quarantine. So, yeah. yeah. All right. Next is Luis. I don't think Luis is here today. Uh, Luis, are you here? Yeah, he wasn't able to make it, um, okay. so we'll just go ahead and kind of introduce him. Right, um, so he's um, he's our webmaster. Um, he does the website, um, and we're going to slowly transition him to get him uh, working on a lot of other platforms, so he's probably going to end up uh, working the Discord with me. Um, and he's a, you know, third-year transfer computer science major, and he does hiking, new foods. Um, he likes swimming um, a lot and then going mountain biking and flying his drone. Okay, and next we have Ross. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Ross. I'm one of those jobs that you make up that Ignatius was talking about. So I'm a former UCSD alum and AIAA was a big part of my undergraduate career. And so as a graduate student uh, coming back to UCSD, I wanted to see how I could help out. Um, one of the things I, I find myself doing is just kind of being there for everybody. So whenever people need me for something, they could just bug me and I'll be like, sure, I'll be there. Um, Ignatius has taken me up on that. And I hope there's a lot of that this year, just because we are able to jump on calls real quick and help out wherever. Um, I'm also just trying to get a lot of the aerospace graduate students involved in some way, shape, or form, either with sharing their work or sharing their story and just showing everybody that aerospace comes from every way, shape, and form. Um, and then I just, I used to work with a lot of people that are in the San Diego area that happen to work at aerospace. So I'm trying to find ways to bring that connection back to UCSD more than just job fairs. Uh, and, and partner it with AIAA if possible. So just a little about me, I'm a second year PhD student. 
Um, I did go here a long time ago, go sixth. Uh, I'm a FRC mentor. I'm mentoring the Price School down the road. That's at UCSD. Um, and then I kind of started at the opposite end of space on accident. I started working with deep sea robotics and moved my way to airplanes and helicopters, which are not my interest at all. And then I ended up landing a gig at, at Lockheed Martin before coming here. And I got to do some pretty cool space stuff there. And my research here is primarily focused on uh, high, high, highly or high thermal conductivity lasers and these special ceramic lasers that we're making in my lab. But um, I'm, I just got put on a new project and I'm gonna learn a whole new set of skills. So I'm kind of just this weird mix of everything. Thank you, Ross. Uh, and now we have Diego. Okay. Hey guys, so my name is Diego Porro and I'm the mentorship coordinator. So my responsibility is pretty much, it's about guiding and helping students to establish also better understanding of entire aerospace engineer fields through mentoring and also making activities that connects them with the aerospace field. Now, how do I do that? It's mainly uh, through the Aerospace Internal Mentorship Program or uh, as you see in the parentheses, the AIM program. <clears throat> the AIM program pretty much is uh, the aim of the AIM program. <laughs> is to help is to prepare students who whether you are first year or whether you are interested in aerospace whatever it is we can pair you with a mentor somebody who is either graduate school or senior year or who has a lot of experience more experience in both academically and career wise to uh and we will pair them with you so that that person can help you with your classes if you ever need help with your classes, if you ever need questions, if you ever need help with your career, maybe understanding what path of affairs on, on the airspace field to take, um, and and so on and so forth. So if you want to join that, then that will be presented to you at uh, URL, URL link pretty soon. So make sure you sign up for that. And also a little bit about me is that I was born and raised in Peru. And yes, if you guys see the map in the middle, it's the country right next to Brazil right there. I also have a dual citizenship. I'm a Peruvian uh, American as well. I'm a mechanical engineer student and I transfer to community college and I like hiking, running, uh, playing Call of Duty, RPGs, also cooking chess and also, I'm sorry, playing chess and dancing salsa and drinking coffee and, you know, bothering my friends a lot. All right. Thank you, Diego. And now we have Alexander. Good evening, everybody. My name is Alex Palesco, and I'm your uh, Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion Coordinator. So what that basically means is that my job is to um, to foster a or to foster an environment of equity, diversity, and inclusion with an AIAA in the UCSD aerospace community. I'm the head of the EDI committee, which is yet to form, and more information on that will follow. Um, outside of EDI, I work. For for the Vice Chancellor's Office for Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion. So if any of you have any questions on some of the resource centers or any kind of programs on campus, I'd be happy to help you out with that. So about me, I'm a third year transfer student in aerospace engineering. So this is supposed to be my last year. Um, in the past, I used to repair and maintain and restore Vietnam era aircraft. So if you take a look at the picture on your right, that's a picture of one of the aircraft I used to restore. Um, some of the interests that I have is um, I, I like roller skating. I like dogs. Picture on the top right in that little circle is a picture of my English bulldog. I like memes. Um, and then I also dance salsa and bachata. I'm in the same exact group as Diego. And recently over the summer, I picked up sewing as my quarantine hobby. And for fun, I also uh, ride fixed gear bicycles like a maniac. Coming up next, we're going to tell you about some of the uh, available positions at AIAA. So someone else, take it away. <laughs> All right, yeah, so we do have um, four current positions that are open. Um, you know, some of these are positions that, you know, we made up last year or the year before. Um, and some of them are positions that, you know, we feel like we need we continue to need to have. Um, and so we still are looking for a treasurer. Currently, I am the treasurer because I do everything that nobody else wants to do. Um, and uh, Brenda is still doing speaker coordinator duties. Um, we need an external coordinator for uh, working with uh, the Idea Center or the, the Jacob School and also uh, outside companies, um, if you are interested in working with outside companies. 
Um, the speaker coordinator, again, works specifically for uh, planning speakers and distinguished lecturers for our GPMs. Um, if you don't know what a distinguished lecturer is, you can ask at the end of this meeting. Um, we have a whole kind of time dedicated for asking questions. And then we have the social coordinator. Um, I kind of also do that right now, but basically you plan socials, game nights, um, when in person, you know, we went laser tagging, we would go to the Miramar Air Show, that all falls under the social coordinators uh, kind of event planning role. And so we have uh, the tiny URL link here. Uh, so please apply. Um, if one of our board members can please type that into the chat as well, that would be amazing. Yeah, I got um, it. Okay. Can I move on? Okay. Yes. All right, and next we have uh, our outreach interest form and mentor mentee application. So uh, Carissa, uh, would you mind talking about uh, outreach real quick? Uh, sure, so outreach, we kind of just work with the community to get people interested in STEM and specifically aerospace industry. And so we work with schools, we work with like high schoolers and stuff like that. And we also work with other engineering organizations to, um, I guess, get the word out there to the community about what we do. And so if you wanna help plan those kinds of events, um, please fill out the interest form. It's not a binding contract or anything. It just shows that maybe you have an interest in helping out and you can just learn about the events. We can send you emails and stuff like that. All right, thank you, Carissa. So yeah, it's an outreach interest form. We'll be able to email you with uh, helping to plan or helping to volunteer at outreach events that we always need a lot of people at. Um, and then Diego, um, mind telling us about the mentor-mentee application? Yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, the mentor-mentee application is the one that I was talking to you guys about, the AIM program. So uh, again, if you want to join the program, make sure you type that URL link and uh, fill out the form, the Google form. The, all the dates are in there. Uh, and definitely by the end of this week, you guys will be hearing from us so you know who, will, who your mentor will be. Um, I, think, I think our date is by the end of next week, but yes. Um, oh, sorry, yeah, next week. Um, the dates are all in the, in the, um, in the form, uh, so make sure you, you know, take a screenshot of that before you apply. Um, if you're a first year or first year transfer, um, feel free to apply as a mentee. Um, or if you're a second year, you know, anyone can apply to be a mentee, but we also really need mentors. So if you are not new here, um, we would encourage you very much to apply to be a mentor uh, to somebody, all right? Um, and at the very least, you get a new friend. Okay, so now upcoming events. So I'll have Brenda take over for here. Yeah. Yes, thank you. So um, we have a few events coming up already. So tomorrow is our first in our new Presenting You series, which is a um, career-oriented workshop series. Um, tomorrow is specifically about elevator pitches. And we are lucky to have some volunteers from the AIAA San Diego section who are going to come and give their feedback on your resumes. These are people who are actually in the industry and they've seen a thing or two about resumes and they might have some tips and tricks or you know, they can just act as you know, the friend who can listen to your, to your elevator pitch. And sorry, did I say resumes? I meant elevator pitches. Um, your elevator pitch and just give you some tips on your, um, just your, how you're presenting yourself, really. Um, so we're gonna start off with a little inf inf informational presentation, and then we will go into breakout rooms where you can practice. So that'll be a great event, and stay tuned for more in that series in the future. And we usually don't, try, we, we try not to have events back to back, but there were multiple factors at work here and it just kind of ended up that way. So we apologize for creating a very hectic week potentially for you guys. Um, so then at the next event after that is our AAA game night, which will also be over Zoom, of course. Um, please check out our Facebook page for more information about that and the elevator pitch workshop and any of our other events coming up. Um, so after that on November 5th, we will have our second GBM. And as we mentioned before, this GBM will have a speaker. So this time we are um, honored to have uh, Philip Pressel come. Um, he worked on the Hexagon KH9 spy satellite, which was one of the 
uh, most complicated spy satellites to date. Um, this is going to be a great presentation. You definitely do not want to miss that. And then on November 19th, we will have our um, Fall Distinguished Lecture event um, featuring um, Paula Bevilacqua. Um, and more details are to be announced on that one. All right. Thank you, Brenda. Again, yeah, elevator pitch workshop. Come to it if you can. Uh, we'll, we'll have, you know, four or five people. Ross will be one of them. Uh, and then, you know, industry professionals uh, who will work on uh, your elevator pitches with you. Sweet. And now I'm going to turn it over to Design Build Fly. Um, David, do you want me to continue sharing the screen or will you share it uh, yourself? No, no, you, you can continue. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I was actually, never mind. <clears throat> So hi, everyone. My name is David, and I'm the project manager of Design Build Fly. Uh, we are part of the AIAA, um, but of course, it, it's not mutually exclusive that you join either or. Um, so what is Design Build Fly? So as the name suggests, we design, build, and fly a remote-controlled, or RC, airplane each academic year and we build so that best meets the requirements of the contest rules for that year. Uh, first, we do principal design on all of the plane's uh, subsystems, going through the conceptual, preliminary, and detailed design phases. Next, we manufacture an assembler aircraft, which is followed by structural and electronics testing. And finally, we fly our plane at competition against 100 other student teams from around the world. It's, um, it's what really makes the um, makes the competition and being part of Design Build Fly. I'll hand it off to Aaron, the chief engineer, to tell us more about who we are. Hey, thanks for that, David. All right, so we are a small team of undergraduates. We don't have any graduate people currently in our uh, lineup, but if you're a graduate student or, you know, some type of higher education, we would love to have you. So we design a plane from the ground up um, because each year in the competition, there's a different set of rules, a different objective, different game objects we have to carry. So it's up to us to decide what type of aircraft we want. We can do, you know, we can do standard layout, twin motor, lifting body, flying wing, you know, it's, it's all up to us. You know, that's a really fun part of the club. Um, you know, we make ourselves, we, uh, we make the fuselage either by some type of foam construction, vacuum bagging, laser cutting parts, or you know some other method. We do the wings by uh, vacuum bagging foam, and uh, it's it's really fun. It's a little bit different now that we don't have access, but we're hoping that changes, uh, you know, next quarter or something. And uh, everyone on the team, they uh, they help out in one way or another. We're all split up in the sub teams, so everyone does their part like aerodynamics will pick airfoils and analyze the aircraft aerodynamically. There is people like propulsions, which, you know, does the calculations for the motors, what we need, battery packs, there's fabrications, there's structures, there's a ton of different teams. All right, can you hit the next slide? Thanks, Ignatius. All right, 2021 competition. So currently, as of right now, um, this is the date for our 2021 competition. So that means that essentially the fly off of the year happens on April 15th to 18th in Tucson, Arizona. Um, so as of right now, the competition is, is proceeding like um, it'll happen in person. So our goal is to submit a proposal with the um, prototype you know, design of what our aircraft will be. Then we submit a written report in February. Um, that's a 60 page report that details you know, all our design decisions our timeline, you know, it's, it's a crazy long report. And then um, April 15th to 18th, we actually do a fly off. So we all meet together and we, uh, we compete, you know, everyone tries to, uh, you know, get the highest score for their aircraft uh, for the year's competition. And we'll go into the year's competition uh, on the next slide, but that's a general overview. Now it's hosted by AIAA. So that's why we're part of the AIAA club and then sponsored by a few big aerospace corporations, Raytheon and Cessna, if you know them. And uh, there's a big rules list um, you know, posted in this slide. If you wanna check it out, you can read through it. It's a lot of rules, a lot of really confusing, but you know, it's, it's part of the fun. 
All right, next slide. All right, so the mission for this year that um, we're all you know, thinking about is we have to design an aircraft that can complete these three missions and with the other different, you know, there's tons of design requirements, but this is the general gist, is that we have to fly one mission, basically just three laps, carrying nothing, just take off, do a circle, do a little 360, and then do that three times and land. And uh, you think that's easy, but uh, like just getting to that point is pretty amazing. Not a lot of teams actually make it to the um, <laughs> to mission one or they crash on mission one. And you know, if you join us, you'll see why. Okay, so mission two is, um, is the container mission. So we have a certain amount of containers that we choose to carry. Um, these containers, they can vary in size and weight. So it's a really, you know, it's a really big thing that we have to talk about. Do we want a few containers, but them to be super heavy and super big? So we'll maximize scoring that aspect, but then we have to get a big bulky aircraft. <laughs> Design build crash, yes. Sometimes we do more crashing than flying. Um, it's always, that, that's always entertaining, but also kind of painful every time it happens. And um, sorry, I'm just looking to chat real quick. Okay, no questions so far. Um, so we have to, for mission two, we have to carry a certain amount of containers. The challenge is the size and the weight of them, you know, and the number that we carry. It's all these varying factors. Um, you know, you could build a super light fast plane that can carry like one container. You can do the bare minimum and that'll maximize your time in mission three, or you can just, you know, focus on mission two, either carry a lot of containers, carry heavy containers or whatever. And then mission three is a deployable sensor. So in that, um, in that mission, we actually have to deploy one of the sensors, tow it behind our aircraft, do three laps with it towed behind our aircraft, and then, and then um, tow it back into the aircraft, get it internal, and then land. So that right there is kind of crazy. And it opens up like you know, a lot of different design considerations and a lot of different approaches you can do. You know, you're essentially almost like towing a, a cruise missile along and you have to um, make sure that that payload is light enough, it's aerodynamically stable, it doesn't, you know, create some type of catastrophic failure, you know, some type of oscillation or vibrations. It's, uh, <laughs> it's certainly the most interesting mission. And then of course we have the ground mission, which is kind of like, um, it's, a, it's a mission we do on the ground. It's kind of like ground crew and operations. But yeah, that's our competition for this year. That is the, um, the, the actual fly off things. But to get to this point, we have to do a lot of design analysis and a lot of, a lot of legwork to actually get to this position. Yeah, and so let's go into the subteams. So I will hand it off, I guess, back to David to uh, talk about aerodynamics. And I passed the ball to Luca. <laughs> uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Luca. I'm the current lead for the aerodynamics subteam. Um, as the name suggests, we run the aerodynamics analysis for the entirety of the plane. Uh, we mainly use a program called XFLR5, uh, which allows us to analyze different airfoils and plane geometry, um, ultimately to design for the to create the optimal design for best mission performance. Um, and if you look on your screen here in the top photo, you can actually see an example of this program. Uh, here we have six different airfoils compared side by side on uh, four different plots. And each one of these plots sh shows us a crucial aspect of uh, plane performance. In addition to this program, we also use SOLIDWORKS and ANSYS to validate our results from XFLR5. Um, if anybody's interested in joining, there's no required amount of experience or knowledge. Uh, we're willing to take anybody and we'll teach you everything you need to know. Thank you. All right, uh, my name is Jan, if you can hear me, and I am uh, the report lead for DDF. Um, it sounds kind of a little bit boring, to be honest, but we are a very important team, trust us. Um, we essentially get the team into the competition by writing the proposal. If you don't write the proposal and you don't score highly enough um, you won't essentially get in. And the same goes for the report. 
Um, so not only do we do that, but we also help out with some analysis. We communicate with other sub teams, um, pretty much all the sub teams. Um, of course, you get to build technical writing skills, learn a bit of MATLAB if you haven't already. Um, you know, get used to you know some sort of graphic design, but it's not that bad. Um, and yeah, you, you do get a bigger understanding of of the project as a whole because you're there. So, you know, if you decide to maybe you know join some of the one of the other sub teams, obviously you can also help out with the report, and that'd be cool. Cool. Uh, hi, I'm Ryan. I'm the propulsions lead. Uh, the propulsions team deals with the propeller, motor, battery, and all the wiring to those components within the actual plane that we build. Um, our focus is to optimize those three components of the RC plane and make sure that our um, plane can best meet the mission requirements. So in previous years, we've had takeoff distances of like 10 feet or like sometimes it's on top of a ramp. Um, a little more years ago, um, we had to actually hand throw the, um, the plane. So uh, making sure that it's safe in all of those, uh, in, the, in all those scenarios uh, is incredibly important to the propulsions team. And on top of that, um, the propulsions team is, in, is comparable to the mitochondria um, because we are the powerhouse of the plane and um, every other team has to coordinate with the propulsions team to make sure that the weight isn't too much for the thrust and that the aerodynamics of the actual airfoil provides enough lift at the given speed that we're optimizing and designing for. So um, the propulsions team has many facets within it and there's of course no barrier uh, to entry so I highly encourage you guys to come in and learn more about propulsions. Uh, there's currently no finance uh, sub-team lead, so I'm usually uh, the one handling the finance, but I will pitch the team nonetheless. Um, in, in finance, we pretty much take care of our yearly budget, um, and that not only includes you know, keeping the budget, making sure we're on track, but it, uh, it's also a little bit more writing in terms of um, writing sponsorship requests uh, to our sponsors, um, emailing it and communicating with our sponsors about our needs, um, and in term, and uh, also design reviews. We are usually the main contact with General Atomics, our main sponsor, uh, but we also do things like um, taking care of um, purchases and reimbursements for all the things that the uh, team purchases, uh, purchases, purchases, uh, okay, never mind. Uh, <laughs> um, the things we buy, essentially. Um, yeah. You got some next slide, please. Hello, my name is Xinghua. Um, the fabrication lead this year. So the fabrication team is where you can get your hands-on experience in manufacturing. The team focused on making components and putting them together for the plane. Uh, this is a chance where you can get hands-on with machine shop tools, uh, fingers crossed, uh, hoping that will happen this year as well. Uh, we'll be using some your, of your classroom knowledge to help select the appropriate materials for the plane. Uh, we're also responsible for installing electronics to make sure the plane fly properly. The manufacturing process can sometimes be a test of your patience and endurance, but it's definitely a very rewarding one once you see a flying pl plane. And of course, we can all have a good cry or laugh about it when we see our crane plane crashes. Hi everyone, my name is Jacob and I am the lead of the stru Structures sub-team. Um, as the sub-team name suggests, members of the Structures sub-team are responsible for designing the primary structures of the aircraft. Um, this usually consists of SOLIDWORKS CAD design, load calculations to ensure that structures or mechanisms will not fail, 
and some finite element analysis to assist in the design of structures. Members of the structural design sub team uh, work very closely with other sub teams to determine the design parameters that the aircraft must adhere to. Um, typically, there are limiting factors, you know, given by propulsions or aerodynamics that really define the designs that the structures sub team produce. Um, I know Aaron talked a little bit about this year's missions. I might go into that a little bit more. Um, this year's missions require us to design and construct a deployment mechanism that will lower and raise a sensor from the aircraft. Um, as a stru structures sub team member, you will play a role in the, in the design of that deployment mechanism, the design of the sensor, and the design of the fuselage to house the deployment mechanism and sensor. So overall, uh, the sub team is quite demanding, uh, yet it's also very rewarding. And like the other teams, you don't need to have any experience. Um, primarily, we will be doing a lot of SOLIDWORKS. And throughout the year, we're going to try to put on some SOLIDWORKS tutorials to teach those techniques and help you use them in the design of the aircraft. So if you're interested, please join the sub team of structures. Yeah, so you just heard from all of our um, sub team leads, actually. And um, once again, I will reiterate that you don't have to have any power experience uh, in, in any of the analysis methods um, or, or um, fabrication techniques uh, before joining Design Build Fly. We will teach you everything you need to know. Uh, and as a new member, uh, you essentially get a chance to choose which sub team you would like to participate in. You can even float around between different sub teams until you find the one that best aligns with your interests. Uh, so why join Design Build Fly? Well, um, uh, not only, once again, um, you need no prior experience before joining, uh, which also means that there is a lot of training and mentorship that happens throughout the year as you work on this hands-on engineering project. And all the while, you get to apply concepts from class many times even before learning about them. And of course, uh, the boy band photos. Yes, they just happen. Uh, we simply find them in our competition photos at the end of the year. Uh, so you know, if anything, maybe this last point might sway you a little. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah. So. Um, oh, no, the previous. Yeah, so how to join. Uh, so most of you um, uh, have already received an email from, from me about this exact GBM. Um, if you did not receive uh, an email from me, uh, there will be a, a form called uh, request for information, which you can fill out, and hopefully as soon as you can afterwards, there will be a link on the next slide. <clears throat> but essentially everyone that has filled out the, the request for information form will then receive uh, another email, po possibly tomorrow, about the next steps to joining Zambo Fly. And this includes uh, a new member questionnaire. It's very simple, just if you want to know a little bit about yourself and your interests and what is it, why do you want to join Design Build Fly? And there will also be a self-guided SOLIDWORKS tutorial, SOLIDWORKS being our, main, our CAD program of choice. Uh, and it uh, should be, uh, should go through all of the steps for you, or sorry, help you go through all the steps. Um, yeah, uh, so if you do design, uh, choose to join Design Build Fly um, by completing those two steps, uh, we'll give you a chance to keep in touch um, uh, with all the with all the leads. And um, just a, like as a general note, it's about a five hour per week commitment, but that of course depends on uh, the responsibilities you choose to take on. And you know, if we have any impending uh, deadlines. Yeah, so on the next slide, uh, we have um, our website, uh, the email, uh, I'll most likely be answering it, but if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to email us. And the, the last link is the request for information. Uh, again, if you have not filled this out 
already, uh, and, or you've joined the, uh, this GBM through the AIAA and are now interested in joining DBF, please do fill that out. And the QR code goes to the same request for information. So uh, thank you, everyone. And thanks again for uh, coming to our, our meeting, uh, our first GBM. Uh, and we hope that uh, you know you found this interesting and enlightening, and uh, that you would uh, consider joining uh, AAA or DBF or both of them. Thank you so much. <laughs>